Hey guys, happy Tuesday to you. I wanted to pop in and I wanted to make a video because I had a request to talk about, um, you know, someone that's new to having their first full body silicone baby, which happens to be a Romy Stridum baby, just like the one you see here. <laughs> not the same doll, not the same edition, but um, I think it's Kaylin Rose, which is uh, who I used to have, which I had named Abigail. So if you've been following my channel long enough, uh, I had the very same baby. Probably not the same number in the edition, but one of them. And she wanted to know some things to look out for. She had some questions about um, handling her silicone baby. Things to look for so she knows how to spot a potential problem or issue with the silicone. And so I'm going to try to do my best to answer those questions for her and also um, for everybody out there that might be new to collecting silicone dolls. Um, I've been collecting silicone babies for a long time. I would say probably a good 10 years maybe. I'm not exactly sure of when I got my very first one, but it was my very first silicone. It was a really long time ago, and I want to say that... It may have been a Vicki Ebling baby, if I recall. I think that was my first silicone baby. And then it grew from there. And shortly after that, I had my first Claire Taylor baby. So I've, I've adopted Claire Taylor babies right from the giddy up. So I've always been a huge fan. And so anyways, I digress. <laughs> first things you want to kind of look for, guys, when you're a new silicone mommy is one, handle the baby with care. I mean, it's, it's common sense to know, I think for most of us, to know that you want to handle your dolls with care. They are a huggable art, but they are still art. And um, even the most sturdy, well-made doll, if handled improperly, you can damage them and ruin them. So that's kind of the number one key is, is handle the baby like you would a real newborn baby. And that's a really good general rule of thumb to follow. I think most artists actually send home care instructions stating the same thing. Because you don't want to tug hard on their limbs. You don't want to tug on their fingers and toes. They're not meant to do that. You can tear the silicone and damage it if you tug a little too hard. So case in point, when you are diapering your baby and changing the baby's diaper, you do not want to necessarily be lifting up the baby by the ankles and feet because you're stretching out potentially bent limbs that may create an issue of tearing behind the knees. I see people do it all the time where I see them lifting up both the hand, both legs by one hand and I can see the silicone pulling. It makes me cringe when I see it in videos because it's not a real baby. So you have to kind of take into consideration that the body is very heavy. If it's a full silicone baby, it's certainly going to be the heaviest point of the doll. And trying to lift the doll up by the two feet isn't, it's going to stress and stretch the limbs. So when I actually change the diaper on my babies, which I don't often have to do that, obviously, they don't soil them, um, I actually lift them up by the bottom, by their little bum, and then slide the diaper underneath. I never pull on their feet in order to lift them up. Now, I know people like to do that for realism, but it does potentially damage the silicone over time if you do it a lot. Um, another thing to think about are not only behind the knees, that's a stress point, the groin area, if you have diapering that's super, super tight over time and then added like super tight clothing, that could also create a potential problem there. Elbow creases, another spot that's always potentially um, a stressing point from dressing and handling and picking up the doll, that that is also a point in which would be a place you could actually see the silicone tearing very easily, also in the armpit area. Those are going to be your main points of super amount of stress when we handle our dolls and when we're changing them that that's the biggest common places that you're going to find an issue with the silicone not always but that's a common place you know I mean any dolls that I've ever had silicone tearing on it's usually in those places um, another place if it's not a jointed neck then and it's poured in one piece the neck is also becomes a very stressed point because the head is so heavy and it's constantly pulling at the neck from side to side, front to back. So you're going to want to make sure you're always picking up the head and supporting the baby's head, just like I said, just like a newborn baby. Because you don't. the idea is you don't want to cause undue stress on those points. 
because that's where you're going to run into a potential problem over time. It may not happen the first couple of times you do it, but over time it may wear out the silicone and you might find it starting to tear. And it also depends on what artist you're buying from, what grade silicone are they using when they make these babies. Because honestly speaking, not all silicone is created equal. I have my favorites. I have spoken about them. But if it's a cheaper made doll with a silicone that has additives in it, it will potentially split and tear much quicker and easier with less handling. So it's something you may want to do your research on before buying. Um, another thing to talk about is armatures. The jury's out with me. I mean, I could go either way with an armature. I've had dolls with armatures. I've had dolls without them. And when I have a doll with an armature in it, it stresses me out. I won't lie. Because I'm not sure what they make the armatures out of. To me, most of them feel like metal. It reminds me of like a, a nicer quality coat hanger <laughs> type of feeling thing in their arms and or legs. And what makes it come to mind that makes it worrisome for me is that if you bend them over and over again, back and forth, back and forth, will it eventually break? In my mind, I say yes. I'm not saying that is the case, but I have heard of them being worn out and stop. they stop working. I have heard of one breaking um, in the elbow joint, and that to me is just something I always think in the back of my mind that I don't want to overbend back and forth when I have a doll with an armature. Um, also... At, at the ends of the armature, where the armature ends, like most of them end in the hand or in the wrist, you don't want to be pushing back and forth to the point where it could poke through and create a hole in the silicone because the silicone is much softer than the armature around it. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind is be careful with the armature, handle with care. Um, I apologize, that's Rue barking. I don't know what has got her going tonight, but every time I go to a video and record something, she starts barking, so I apologize. Um, so another point to, just to point out, a point to point out, there's quite a sentence. Um, when dressing your baby, you know, I don't particularly dress Josie very often. I don't handle her as often. That's why you see her in the same outfit that you've seen her in for um, at least a couple of weeks now. Because one, I love the outfit. It's so pretty, I love it. And two, I just don't like to overchange her if I don't have to. I have a Reborn for that. It's one of the reasons why I like to keep a Reborn in my collection. So if I want to change a doll a lot, I can do it with the Reborn without having to worry about damaging the doll. But um, when you do change your doll, and I'm not saying you can't change your doll several times every day if you want to, but you also, anything rubbing against the paint and the matted, you know, there's matting over top of the paint, that keeps the doll from being shiny. Anytime you're taking on, rubbing on, and rubbing off, because that's what's happening when you're pulling clothes on and off the doll, you're potentially rubbing off potential paint. And of course the matting, because dolls, when they're handled a lot, um, they get shiny spots. And even brand new, they come with shiny spots, because there's no perfectly, I don't think I've ever had a doll that didn't have at least a couple little shiny spots, brand new right from the artist. But when you start seeing the doll lose all of its matting, it's from overhandling and changing and or bathing. Don't believe in bathing your dolls. It's something to think about. So if you want to keep the doll in perfect condition, I would say, one, don't, don't overly dress your doll too much. Leave that for reborns if you have them. Two, don't bathe the doll. These dolls, most artists will tell you they're not meant for bathing. They're not living babies. They're not dirty. They don't need to be bathed with soap and water. I know a lot of us like to make videos bathing our dolls, and that's perfectly fine if that's your cup of tea. But just know that if you are bathing your doll, you may potentially be taking off the matting and or the paint over time. Something just to keep in mind, guys. Like I said, to each them, everybody enjoys their dolls in a different way. This is, I'm telling you what I don't do with my dolls and how I preserve them and try not to have anything happen to them. Um, now, when dressing your baby, I always cover my doll's hands with mitts. I always have. It's something that I learned early on. It made it easier to dress a silicone baby. Also, you don't run the risk of splitting and pulling and bending backwards the fingers. And same with the toes. Be careful when you're putting their toes into little shoes. I always put little, even tiny little socks on, even if I'm putting on shoes 
like the little moccasins, I put on a little pair of ankle socks underneath because I'm so afraid of bending back a toe and not realizing it because I can't see inside the shoe. So just kind of common sense things, guys. Things that seem like you would not want to do because it may damage the doll, don't do. That's how I kind of, that's what I go by. Um, caring with the hair. So we all know that with silicone babies, their hair is not um, glued inside. It's rooted. Some dolls are rooted deeper than others and lose more hair than others. I generally don't handle the hair a whole lot either, guys. I try to comb it as little as possible. Um, Josie's got beautiful hair. It stays put. I don't have to really, I just kind of pat it back down after I've, I even had a hat on her not that long ago. And, um, her hair just pats back down. I don't really brush it or need to because, you know, you might pull the hair out. Um, let's see, what else? Powdering your baby. Yes, if, you doll, if your doll seems to need powder, occasionally powdering it, the doll with pure cornstarch is perfectly fine. I always say refer to the artist that you bought the doll from and they'll give you the best instructions. I have um, heard that Romy says that you can gently wash your doll, put a layer of powder over the doll, leave it overnight, and then rinse off the excess. I've never done that. Um, this, this person specifically asked me about this, which is why I'm addressing it. Um, I would ask Romy for exact directions if she says that that's the best way. Like I said, I've never had to do that. I don't rarely, when I even, you know, when I have this baby, I don't generally have to powder her. Her silicone is very smooth. She's not shiny or sticky. When I had my previous Romy baby, I never really had to powder her either. So I think it's kind of a judgment call if you feel like the doll needs powdering. Um, and you want to try Romy's way, you can certainly get in touch with her. I'm sure she would walk you through that. But a gentle powdering with cornstarch should be fine. Um, but like I said, uh, I always tell people refer back to the artist if you have, you know, if you want to be exact to what the artist would like you to do when you're powdering them, then do it that way. But um, yeah, and the last thing is how do you tell if a doll is splitting, like the silicone is tearing? You'll be able to tell. It's very obvious um, because it's very uneven where it starts to pull away from itself. And, you know, it's unpainted. So it's not going to look like the regular rest of the doll's skin. So that's something to kind of look for in the creases. Every time I change Josie and or any silicone doll I have at that time, I am always inspecting her. So I always take the time when I'm changing my dolls to inspect them, look at their creases, make sure I haven't done any damage to them, look in between their fingers and toes, all the places that could be stress points where it could catch and pull the silicone where it could tear. I do that every single time I change the doll. I'm always very aware of what condition my dolls are in at all times because I'm a little probably OCD about it. So, but other than that, enjoy your baby. Congratulations to anybody that's, you know, new to the silicone doll collecting world and to those that are getting new babies and already silicone mommies. Congratulations to you too. Um, so yeah, enjoy your baby, but just use common sense and to be very gentle and you should get lots of years of enjoyment out of them. Um, they're made very well. Majority of them are very well made and you can enjoy them, you can handle them and give them love and attention without doing them any damage um, and they'll last a long, long time. So that's my two cents on things to look out for when you're new to silicone adoptions. <laughs> if you have any questions, guys, or comments, feel free to post them below. I'm happy to answer the questions that you might have and I might be back to do a tag video shortly. So. Hope everybody's having a great start to their work week, and we will see you all soon, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.